The annual cereal drive has kicked off for all Lloydminster Catholic Elementary Schools. In line with Saskatchewan's Breakfast for Learning Week, each school is kindly requesting donated boxes of healthy cereal. As Kathy Lee explains, the drive is another way to promote healthy eating in kids before and after school. Only the first day of the cereal drive at Father Gorman, and these grade fours are working hard to collect the most. I want to tell them to bring some cereal boxes. Each class that collects cereal, uh, the class that brings the most, they, they, they get a prize for their class. Winning a prize is an incentive, but these students are driven by another reason to collect as many boxes as possible. Because kids that don't have had breakfast this morning, you could, they could have the cereal you brought. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And because when, um, maybe you would get hungry through the day. All donated cereal helps support the school's breakfast and after school program. It's very important for kids to have a good breakfast before they come to school. Uh, so they're ready to learn, they're settled, their stomachs aren't hungry because they've just slept for 12 or plus hours and uh, their bodies have been fasting. So they really need to eat before they start to learn. While any donation is appreciated, the school is focusing on promoting health. And we're very specific in the types of cereals that we want um, families to bring. Uh, you know, Rice Krispies, Cheerios, Corn Flakes, nutritious, healthy cereals. I mean, did you get? And these kids know a thing or two about the importance of health and eating breakfast. Because it gets your body going for the day. So you wouldn't get sick. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. Well, getting your kids back to school is a major expense for many parents. Recognizing that, the Lloydminster United Way and Staples partner together once again for the local Tools for Schools program. Shauna Roshuk has more. The annual Tools for Schools program is helping some local students head back to class with the essential supplies they need. It also gives support for parents who may find it hard to make ends meet with all the expenses that come with the start of a new school year. When you have to feed and, and stuff, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that sometimes you just have to give what you can give and, and then hope that the school can supply the rest. Another huge success this year, a much needed program lending support for students and the school system. It's one of those programs that I think sometimes goes underlooked. Um, the kids every day show up and uh, they need the supplies in order to be able to be educated properly. Even with a strong economy here in the border city and more people moving into the region, not every family is prospering. We've got a lot of people that have come in from other countries and stuff that are coming into the school system, so as that growth and demand goes up, of course, this demand for this program is going to go up. Over $2,000 in cash was raised, along with over five shopping carts full of school products, all going towards helping students in both the public and Catholic school system from kindergarten through to grade 12. When I was talking to the schools, they say that they're looking at about 20 kids per school that uh, are looking for stuff around this time of year. And so, you know, we're looking at at least 100 kids that are going to be affected by the program. The campaign wraps up this weekend. However, Tuck says both Staples and the United Way will still accept cash donations or school supplies for the program. Shauna Roshik, New Cap News. Poetry and stories filled the night air on Saturday as writers from around the border city got together for a meeting of the Saskatchewan Writers Guild Board. The display photos are textures and colors. Words chosen carefully and well received were the order of the day as local writers shared their talents at an open mic night hosted by the Saskatchewan Writers Guild. We have wonderful writers across the province and to get to meet some of those writers is, is a lot of fun for us as well. The Guild boasts 700 members across Saskatchewan with two-thirds of them in Saskatoon and Regina. Part of it is outreach to, to show people that we're not an organization that is completely hub-centric, that we do care about the writers who are in the rural areas and in the areas outside of the, out of, outside of the, the bigger cities. The group welcomes writers of all levels, including first-timers and those who have been published multiple times. And farmers here are in a bit of a standstill as they await the legislative decision. They're harvesting now, but they're unable to plan ahead for next year's grain season. Right now, the board isn't offering any contract options later than October because they're unsure of their future. As Whitney Stinson reports, especially here where Minister Jerry Ritz is also our local MP, it's a hot-button issue. 
Jim Matherall was one of the 62% of farmers who voted in favor of the Canadian Wheat Board. He's been farming wheat since the 1970s and enjoys the security the CWB provides. That gives us a, a price premium overall. Uh, it's in the order of half a billion dollars a year that we, that we capture in additional premiums from being able to market that way. Even though Matherall and other farmers who took part in this survey are in Minister Jerry Ritz's riding, he refuses to acknowledge their voices. Well, no expensive survey could ever trump the individual right of farmers to market their own grain. That's the bottom line. He's looking at creating a different model in which the CWB would be a voluntary board, so farmers who wanted to use it could, but those who longed for the freedom to market their own grain could also do that. No, that's not possible. Once the Canadian Wheat Board loses that authority, it has to start operating like a grain company and because it's never been one, it doesn't have any uh, capital base to finance its operations because that's given back to farmers every year. And most importantly, no facilities, either in country or at port. So it's in a situation where it's got to rent uh, space from its competitors. We uh, look at the Australian model. It's uh, proven everything we've said is possible here in Canada. They're growing more product. They're uh, selling to two and a half times as many countries as they did before. It's an example of what we need to do and we will continue to move forward to give Western Canadian farmers the same rights and freedoms that now farmers in Australia and Ontario for that matter enjoy. Metherall thinks a bidding war in his grain wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing all the time, but long term, he'd lose cash. Obviously certain individuals are in a position from time to time to, to capture a premium spot price, but uh, and you'd always hope that you'd be one of those some of the time, but but uh, year in and year out, we're going to take less money. Farmers now have to wait out this very public battle before they can figure out next year's farming season. Some, like Mother All, hope that democracy will rule, but Ritz insists democracy already spoke when they voted him into power. Whitney Stinson, Newcap News.